Hello and welcome to Book Brilliance, the author's voice. And I am so excited today because our guest author is all the way from Barbados. And um, I can't wait for you to hear what she has to say because she is a real driver and she will tell you a few amazing tips on how to be successful with your book particularly if you want to become a best-selling author. So let me introduce to you Nikisha Prince Haynes, all the way from sunny Barbados. You're welcome, Nikisha. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for having me on Book Brilliance. I feel honored to be a part of this interview, and I'm sending you sunshine all the way from beautiful Barbados. Oh, fantastic. It is, and I'm not just saying this, but it is my favorite Caribbean island, um, and it's just, I can't wait to get back there, you know, so as soon as we can get back on planes, and um, Barbados will be one of my first destinations. Wow. So, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do, a wee bit so that we can get to know a wee bit about you and your journey. As mentioned before, my name is Nikisha Prince Ains, and I am a self published best selling author of the book Your Client Is Not Your Friend. I am also the CEO of Prestige Admin Services, where I provide virtual assistance. For example, content creation, personal assistant, editing, proofreading, speaking engagement, and I am also a motivational speaker. Oh, wow, wow. And what, what brought you to doing that work, Nikisha? What was it about that work that you thought, this is what I want to do? Okay, it all dated back some time ago while I was working for a company and work started to slow down and I thought to myself before I have all my skills and everything back up and not make good use of them I decided to start my own business on the side which is called prestige admin services and in doing prestige admin services I dealt with some clients that was very unfair to me <laughs> or I should say I had some clients that I failed to draw the boundary line between business and pleasure and it resulted in a lot of unnecessary drama loss of income tears etc and that is what birthed my book your client is not your friend because also i was browsing some online groups and i realized that i was not the only one in this situation so Ooh. i thought to myself might as well i write a book teaching other entrepreneurs, well, budding entrepreneurs and even seasoned entrepreneurs, how to separate their personal life from their professional life, how to work along with your clients, be friendly, but yet still not up close and personal with them. Mm, absolutely. And, you know, it's one of the things, um, it's entrepreneurs, business owners that you do have to work on. You don't often consciously think about it, but it is when you have issues around the boundaries and people taking what I would say in Scott, you know, with the Scottishness, the Mickey out of you and expecting, you know, like 10 times the amount for the little payment that they're making. So I definitely think there is a place for it because I know when I work with clients, boundaries is something we talk about um, because it is Definitely. important, you know. So um, so you've told us that was the reason you wrote the book. So people will want to know, how have you been so successful with the book at getting it bestseller? So read us through or tell us some of the titles that you've got. I think I've got them here. So what have you achieved with your book so far? Okay. So I, I should go back a little, I take a step back, I should say. In publishing my book in less than 24 hours, my book was, well, I should say less than 12 hours to be exact. My book was ranked number one new release in one category. And in three weeks, my book attained number one new release rank. I had bestseller rank number three, bestseller rank number four, and number eight as well and i would say the reason for this is because when i chose the name your client is not your friend it sp spoke volume to me and i think that it's a name that speaks volume to every 
entrepreneur as well because as business owners as mentioned before we should not let our clients be our friend i mean it's a topic that has been argumentable but i should say that for me it has worked for me thus far in having my business become a successful one in learning to draw that boundary line between business and pleasure Mm, absolutely so you said it got to number one within 12 hours wow congratulations that is some achievement how long did it actually take you to write your book i would say for me it took me over a period of time because having my clients took advantage of me it didn't just happen overnight it was not a one day something so i would say my book took me some time because i dated back to all the other experiences that i would have been through with past clients and some of the experiences as well that i would have overlooked and thought it was nothing that led me to write my book so sometimes it's the simple things with our clients that we may overlook like for example our clients might pay us to work for five hours and being that good or wanting for a good name we might add in add in an extra three hours for free and then Some clients might want to take advantage of that and say like, okay, well, you did it for me the first time, then you could do it again and then again and again. And next, you know, they may even ask you to do it for free. So it took me a while to put together all of my past experiences and those from others to actually came up with my book. Yeah, I I love that. You know, know, it's like we've all been there, including myself, you know, um, the amount of stuff we do for free, particularly in the beginning when you're full of enthusiasm for your business and you actually don't really know, you know, what it means to be a businesswoman, you know. Um, So I'm laughing because I'm sure, I, I bet you could do a book on stories from entrepreneurs Definitely. around those boundaries. So there's an idea for another book. Um, Nikisha, Thank you. you can have that one for free. So Thank you. I, I just, I love it. Oh, that's really made my day what you said there. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it's, it's a serious book in terms of it's the difference between being successful and making money and um, thinking you're successful, but, you know, your bank account screaming out for some more dollars or whatever in it. Um, so I love that. And um, so in, in, your, in your book, have you interweaved um, any of your story? Pardon me? Have you, have you included parts of your story? It told the little anecdotal stories of why you came up with that learning and why that was important. Definitely. I would say my book, I would say about 90% of the book is based on my own experiences that I would have been through with clients. So my book, it's a little twist from a usual business book because I not only give tips, but I backed my tips up with real life stories so that persons can more relate to the tips that I'm giving. So I just not say, do not go outside and or should say do not drink and drive i'm giving you an example of what would happen if you go and you drink and you drive and there's a relatable story that can go with that advice you know and that is key to a good book it's absolutely key to a good book and people come back and get more and more and more so other than selling the book how else are you using your book to promote you and your business I've also created a course from my book, caption how to separate your personal life from your professional life. So I use my course as well to teach persons and I do seminars and workshop on how to start and maintain a successful business and how to separate your personal life from your professional life. So for me, I think that my book speaks for itself and the name and also I do other engagements based on recommendations from what I would have done during speaking engagements, seminars, and even interviews. Yeah, absolutely. Like we're having today, you know, so tell us about how the doors that have been opening for you because you're an author. Okay. So I'll tell you about my recent engagement. I just concluded a speaking engagement. It was six speakers for six days and it was a youth arena that was put together by a Ghana and it pulled together 
256 youths and adults from across the globe. And I'm telling you, it was an amazing experience because when, when Mr. Hammond first reached out to me to do the summit, I was like, okay, so how is this gonna be done? And he said, via WhatsApp. And I'm thinking, how are you gonna do a summit with 256 persons via WhatsApp? But I'm telling you, it was a success. We did it via voice notes text message and also they had like other speakers use videos and pictures to back up their speaking and it was a success and based on that that concluded on wednesday the 23rd of may to be exact and out of that i've already booked two engagements to speak at a university wow. in ghana and also to speak at an ngo in nigeria so i'm preparing for those two events as well and i've recently concluded a speaking engagement and the feedbacks from the engagement it was awesome i felt overwhelmed by the love that i received from everyone across and including the other five speakers and i should say i was the youngest speaker and i was the only wow. speaker from the caribbean wow 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 congratulations that Thank is you. a huge achievement and all because you've written a great book so the power in writing the right, what I call a definitive book, that absolutely has got your heart and soul in it, it's got your journey, it's got your philosophy, and it's about leaving the legacy. And you definitely, Nikisha, have achieved that with, what's the name of your book? <laughs> Your client is not your, your client's friend. not your friend, that's right. I wanted to say best friend. So your client is not your friend. I mean, what a fantastic title. What does that mean? You're going to pick it up straight away. And what, the thing is, what I do like about your title is it's one of those off-the-cuff throwaway remarks, isn't it? People say it. But actually, to sort of pick it up and go, oh, wait a minute, this is a little gem here. What can I do with that? And particularly when you've um, experienced it, has just been magnificent. So in terms, so you're enjoying being an author, the opportunities it's bringing you, the ability to grow your business. Have you got the writing bug? Are you going to write another book? Definitely, I've already started on my other book, but based on the, I should say, this current book, Your Client Is Not Your Friend, there's so much engagement and I'm so busy with this book that I haven't had the opportunity to complete my second book, but I definitely want to complete it as soon as possible to get it out there. And are you able to share with the author's voice what it might be called or is that under wraps? I think it's under wrap. It's going to be a surprise. Trust me, oh, it's going good. to be another best-selling book. Yeah, but I just want to say something and, and get your view on it as well, Nikisha. You've touched on something important. And, you know, as a publisher, this is really important. When you write a book, um, you've got to give that book justice. So if you think of authors like Stephen Covey in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he didn't write that book and then rush out to write a second book. No, because when you write a definitive book, that paves the way for you to create amazing momentum in your business. And it's about timing when that second book comes out. So um, you, you're right. I love the fact that you said, I'm so busy with that book. And that's the thing. You know, you do need to give yourself that time. So when did you say your book became number one? In less than 12 hours. Oh, but how long after, ago, how, how long's your book been out? Actually, I wrote my book, la I published my book last Easter, to be exact, last year Easter, oh, right, so you've, on you've Easter Monday, months, to be exact. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you've had the 12 months, and it can be, you can get good longevity, two to three years on one book. It goes, and then you bring something else out that will enhance and supplement what you've already spoken about. And that is absolutely the key to being a successful author, particularly when you're a, a, an entrepreneur and you're writing a business book or you know, self-help and these kind of books. It is about timing. Um, I know sometimes we get excited. We just want to get another book out. But actually playing the waiting game is in your favor because you create fear, uh, you create the absolute hunger from um, clients. You just need to look at what they do with movies and the big authors. Well, how do they play it? They don't just keep throwing it out, you know? So there is a bit of time in between. So 
you're doing the right job there, Nikisha, and um, keeping us all guessing. I'm glad you never told us what it's called. I will be keep asking you, what's it called, what's it called? <laughs> anyway, Nikisha, I want to give you the last word. So what advice would you give to either new authors, authors that are stuck, stuck or seasoned, seasoned authors? What is your one really tip you say, everybody should know this about becoming an author? What I always tell people, because as persons always ask me, Nikisha, what is, uh, how much money are you making from your book? And I say, I always say to them, do not worry about the book sales. Worry about what comes from the book. Worry about the engagements, what your book can bring you, the exposure that your book can give you. Do not focus on the sales. Yes, sales is important, but focus on the engagements. What, what you get from the book and how much you can gain from the book and just as you mentioned before do not try to rush a book when you finish writing one book and you publish it and you say okay well two months after three months after i'm gonna go and publish another book try to see how much you can get from that one book and make the best of it and protect your reputation always i always say this to entrepreneurs in the whole learn to protect your reputation and your business is going to be successful absolutely you know you are your brand and if you damage your brand by making a, a wrong mistake that's why it's always important to be speaking to people who've done it before that you are aspiring to because it's so easy for us to get excited run headlong and make a mistake because then it can take us quite some time to repair any damage that we do well nikisha it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today on the author's voice i'm sure you'll be gracing um the author's voice again with your insight your energy your vivaciousness Definitely. and i can't wait to um hear more about the next book once it's ready and it's in its timely place to be revealed to your fans and the world Thank you so much for the opportunity of being a guest on The Author's Voice. I did enjoy my interview and I wish you success in everything that you do and keep up the amazing work. Thank you so much, Nikisha. And until the next time, remember, be brilliant.